Hey everyone, Keith McGowan, the Outboard Dad here, here to help you have a better boating experience. Today we're going to install this lower unit, but first I want to put my hose on this, run the water up, and make sure we get good water flow through the unit. We've already replaced the thermostats on this in my previous video, and we've also put a new poppet valve in, so we want to give it a good flush. Then another thing we're going to do is I'm going to open up this air pump. I've done some research through a buddy of mine that's a mercury guy uh, that I've known for many years and he said the biggest challenge with these units is no one ever does the maintenance on the air pump that there's an o-ring inside here that if you don't replace it water gets in the air pump and it sends water into the engine and ruins the engine so we're gonna go ahead and do that we're gonna order a kit for it we're gonna open this up show you guys how to do that how to service that air pump uh, sometimes it's a mystery to people and then we're gonna hook up a gauge to it when we get it running and we're going to make sure that we get the right pressure out of it. It's supposed to be 10% less than our fuel side. So let's get into that a little bit. Please like, subscribe, and send me any comments you have. And we'll do our best to show you everything you need to see so that we can have a good flow of these videos for you. So now I'm going to roll this out on the stand, make sure it's secure. We'll hook up the hose, and let's see if we get good water flow through it. Okay, so I just took a little garden hose here, short piece, put an end on it with my valve. So I have a little control right here. So I have a really good amount of pressure at my house, so I don't want to force too much. I also don't want the hose to fly off. I stuck it up there pretty far so it would hold in place, hopefully. And uh, let's turn the water on and see what we get. So flushing through nicely, it's good to see. So now I feel comfortable that we have good water flow. I'm gonna assume it just was that water pump. Uh, just too old and, and wasn't flexible enough to be forcing any water out. So now we can go ahead and we'll go through a quick video here of installing that lower unit, where to put the grease in the right places so that it can be removed again very easily when the time comes. And we'll get that on there. And maybe we'll fire it up just to run it, just to see what it runs like. And then we'll get into that air pump. So we'll go ahead and trim this up, get ready to put our lower unit on, kick it over to one side. So we're going to go ahead and take a little bit more white lithium grease. We're going to put it on these threads, make sure we get it deep in the threads really good. But I'm also going to wipe it completely around the whole stud, all the way up. This way the whole thing gets lubricated really well, because that's where corrosion can build up sometimes, and then it can get stuck. And then we're also going to put a little bit on our shifter shaft piece. Uh, there is some on our shifter shaft coming out of the lower unit, but we're going to put some on here as well. Uh, the rest of these holes look in really good shape. It's very clean. I do see another set of threads here for the skeg. We'll go ahead and put some lube in there. I like to have a little extra in the holes. It's always better. Keep corrosion down. And then we'll fit this up inside here. And we'll notice our shift shaft is a little loose here. So we're probably going to have to line that up as we bring this up. Uh, we'll use my patented ratchet strap on here. We'll get that set up so that uh, it makes it a little easier to hold on to. So what I did was here, I just got my chair set up here because it's easier for me to pick it up this way than bending over. Um, notice I have my, trap, my strap set up here. This way I can get it just over top of my cavitation plate, pull on it tight. And then once I get it up close to in place, I can just start ratcheting. This way it's a little easier to hold on to it and I can line up my shifter shaft. Also, there is a small tube on here that's actually the pickup tube for your speedometer. Lower unit is so clean, I was able to blow right through it with air, so I know that works well. So I took the tube off of the fitting here and then plugged it on so I can fish it up through and it'll be easier to hook it up that way than trying to hook up the tube on the lower unit. So let's get this up inside here. See, I have my tube kind of hanging out from my speedometer. Fish that up through here. There we go. Now that's sticking out. Now I'll make sure my tube lines up for my water pump. 
And now I'm close enough that I can get my strap on here. Now I can get a couple ratchet clicks on it. And now I can hold it and line up my shifter shaft. So my guess now is I have to turn my flywheel a little bit or I could put it in gear, but I want to keep it in neutral. So I'm going to go turn my flywheel a little bit to get my drive shaft to line up. All right, so as soon as I turn my flywheel, the pressure I had on this with the strap just went oop, up a little bit. So I can push it a little bit. Now I know I'm close. I'm lined up with my spline. Now I can line up my shifter shaft. Make sure that's good. I can even shift it a little bit. Oh, looks like it was already shifted. I have to put it back into neutral. So let me drop it down a little bit. So once we've got neutral lined up, this is an extra cheap ratchet strap. It's clicking, so I have to kind of hold it. Make sure we get it up in place. Now I know that it's connected. I can go ahead and shift my shifter. Yeah. Now it's neutral. Now I can start putting my nuts on. So now that everything's lined up, we're going to go ahead and tighten down those bolts, make sure everything's set to go. And we'll check that lower unit oil like we said we were going to do. And then we'll continue on in the next video. Uh, we're going to probably do a test run just to make sure there's water flow with the new water pump in it. Then we'll get into that air pump. So we'll continue on in the next video. Please like, subscribe, and send me any comments you have. And we'll continue on. If there's anything you want us to check on this outboard, that air pump is the last thing. I'm going to go ahead and order an O-ring kit for that tonight. So hopefully I have that next week sometime and we'll finish this one up clean it all up put it up for sale so please like subscribe send me any comments that you have i am also working on a outboard motor buying guide used outboard motor buying guide going to kind of start with two stroke and then work my way up to four stroke but it's mainly for two stroke older motors 90s even you can find some clean motors this one's a 2002 extremely clean um, so I'm going to work on that buying guide and get that advertised. In the meantime, any questions you have, please send them out. We're here to help you have a better boating experience and dispel that myth of the best two days or the days I bought it and the days I sold it. This is Keith McGowney, Outboard Dad, and we'll see you in the next video.